Coming up next on Signal by Sony, we're going to tear down the new 3D floggy camera to get a good look at the parts inside and how they work. And if you're in the market for a new laptop, you're going to want to see how the new Sony Vio S series stacks up against the latest MacBook Pro. Plus, some cool photo tips from the winner of Sony's Emerging Photographer Award. Signal by Sony starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Anthony. And I'm Samia Khan, your new Signal co-host. Welcome to Signal, Samia. Thanks so much, Anthony. Uh, before we get into it, just a little shout out to our former host, Melody Oktari. Melody has just graduated from the Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley, and she is on to becoming the next Zuckerberg. So sadly, that means she's no longer a part of Signal, but we do wish her the best of luck, and we are really happy to have Samia on board. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Anyways, we've got a lot of great stuff lined up for this episode, starting with the recently released 3D bloggy camera. Now, some of you may remember that Signal got a first look at this camera back at CES in January. This was super cool and I only got to have my hands on it for a couple minutes, but it's really awesome to have like a full 3D video camera in your hands wherever you go. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous that I wasn't there, but fortunately I got to tag along on this Mac shoot. This time we opened up Sony's new 3D bloggy camera, but to get a better sense of the parts and how they worked, I gave it to someone who knows a thing or two about the inner guts of a gadget. Kyle Weens is the CEO of iFixit.com, a site all about taking consumer devices apart so you can learn how to repair them. Now, earlier this week, he joined me in the studio to walk us through our 3D bloggy camera teardown. Kyle, thanks so much for joining me and helping me tear apart this 3D bloggy. It is my first teardown, I'm kind of excited. Question. Have you taken apart a 3D camera before? Yeah, I took apart the Nintendo 3DS uh, the other day, and it was interesting to see how they calibrate the, the different cameras. So I was excited to get inside this and see Sony's take on the same. Problem. Are there any fun facts that you learned just in regards to 3D cameras in general? Yeah, 3D is really a challenge because traditional 3D you had to have uh, glasses to be able to see, right? Which is which is a challenge if you're shooting in 3D, you want to see the effect in real time. And so what they're doing here with the LCD is a new technology that allows you to see the 3D without having glasses. So while I'm shooting, you can actually look at the LCD screen and see what the 3D looks like. Right. Got it. Okay, so let's take this apart. What do you have here? So what we've got here, this is the, the front case of the bloggy. The rear panel is actually really cool. This is a, uh, a textured rubber plastic coating that uh, makes it so it won't slip out of your hand. Okay. It feels really nice. And then from left to right here, I've got the, uh, the battery, uh, fairly large battery. And uh, then this is the very special LCD, which I'll talk about here in a second. Then this here is the touch controller. Mm -hmm. And then the, the two 3D cam well, 2D cameras, combine them to make 3D. Yeah, the two lenses. Right. And then we've got the, uh, the main processing board and the, the memory controller, and then these are the frame components. Okay, so you mentioned the LCD. What makes this LCD so unique? So this LCD is a little bit thicker than a normal LCD, and the reason is it has an additional film inside that's called a parallax barrier. Okay. The, the parallax film creates uh, lines where it, it sends a different signal to one eye than, than it sends to the other. So it actually bends the light differently, and you end up with one completely different picture being shown to your left eye than your right eye. So you can see it. Now the trick is you have to have it exactly in, in the right place in front of you, and only one person can see it at a time. Uh, but it's, it's really, really cool. It allows you to see it without glasses. Got it. That's important because we're not always carrying around glasses. No. <laughs> I don't really want to be wearing 3D glasses when I'm <laughs> shooting video. And then the 3D effect is created by rather small cameras. And, and you look at this and you think this is the camera. Check this out. I'm going to take the cover off. And you can see these are actually the cameras underneath. Oh, wow. So this is a little like R2-D2 looking <laughs> covers. Cute. But the cameras are, are quite small. These are two 5 megapixel cameras. Uh, the the bloggy can shoot 5 megapixel still photos or when you, you switch to 3D mode, then it combines the image of the two cameras. Now that doesn't mean you get 10 megapixels, it means that it's uh, interlacing the images together to create a uh, 1080p 3D video image. So in order to get a 3D effect, you have to have dual lenses? You have to have two separate cameras, so it gives you two separate vantage points, just like your eyes are spaced apart, right? Now the distance between the cameras is very particular, and when, when they're manufacturing these, they actually have to measure these down to the fraction of the millimeter, and then they assemble it, they glue it together so they can't budge, and then they calibrate each device off the assembly line separately. So they're they're measuring to pixel perfect because you wouldn't want it aligned slightly differently. It could cause headaches. The 3D image has to be perfectly constructed. Got it. We don't like headaches. So this here, this is the main processor. This is uh, what we call a system on chip. It's basically an entire computer in one chip that's about the size of a postage stamp. You can see my thumb there. 
and this has integrated on it a full-on H.264 3D video processor, so it's merging in real-time the images and creating a single frame, a 3D frame from the two cameras. And then there's some various support circuitry on here. You can see this is where the two cameras connect to the main board there. Mm -hmm. The camera actually has 8 gigs of memory as well, correct? That's right, right there. So this here, this is a flash memory chip. This is the same part that you would have inside of an SD card. Uh, but on this camera, it doesn't have an SD card that's integrated into the camera. So you can't upgrade it, but you've got 8 gigabytes, which actually with 3D, which takes a lot of space, it still has room for 80 minutes of 3D. So you videos. can still take over an hour of 3D. Mm -hmm. Video right. and 2D with around four it's, hours. It's around four hours. Yeah. Got it. Very cool. And then this here, maybe uh, mo the most interesting mechanically, is <laughs> this is a built-in USB port, so you can plug it right into your computer. Check this out. Pretty cool. Then this here, this is uh, a heat sink and electromagnetic shield, but primarily you can feel how rigid that is. That's providing a lot of the structural support. The, the bloggy feels pretty solid and it's mm -hmm. mostly coming from this metal frame that runs through the center of it. And then these here are just cooling uh, pads to wick heat off of the processor onto this. Got it. Well, Kyle, thanks to you, I've learned a lot about the inner workings of a 3D bloggy, so thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so iFixit is a great site for those of you who like to tinker with electronics. However, keep in mind that when you crack open a device, it could void your warranty depending on the brand. So just a word of warning to check into that before trying it yourself. Anyway, I want to thank Kyle again for joining me. And if you guys are interested in getting the 3D Bloggy, it's available right now and you can get all the details from the Sony website. Now, some of you might be in the market for a more mobile laptop, maybe something like a 13 inch. Well, we know it's tough for you to wrap your head around all the options out there, especially if you're not really a hardcore Mac or PC user. Right, so we want to help you make a good buying decision. So what we have here right now are two good laptops to compare. We've got the Sony Vio S series and the latest MacBook Pro. These are both the base line models. Now both are great brands, but we're going to get into some of the differences. Uh, first, a couple similarities actually. In both computers, the processing power is the same. Okay, so both have a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor and 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, they're both about the same thickness at a little under an inch thick. So how does the Vio S differ from the MacBook Pro? Well, the Vio is over half a pound lighter, so this is 3.8 pounds, and the MacBook Pro is 4.4 pounds, which doesn't sound like a huge difference until you are carrying it around all day. Not fun. Not <laughs> fun. Uh, you get more storage with the standard Vio S. The baseline model comes with 500 gigs, while the baseline MacBook Pro only comes with 320 gigs. Which is really important. It's actually. really important. You never think about it when you're buying it, but yeah. once you get your computer literally like a month or two later crap Stuff I filled it up. up. Yeah. yeah pictures, music, movies, everything just takes up space you know. Now here's the thing neither computer actually gets kudos for a high resolution screen however the bio is slightly higher at 1366 by 768 versus the MacBook Pro at 1280 by 800 so it's slightly better when you're watching movies right. to use a bio. Uh, well yeah absolutely and you've got you know the more widescreen Wide aspect screen. ratio. It's kind of like being in a movie theater it's sort of. It's as close to being in a movie theater as you can be with a 13 inch screen. <laughs> now the Vio S is actually easier on your wallet as well. The MacBook Pro starts at around $1,200 while the Vio is under $1,000. It's basically more than $200 less. Now both the computers have similar battery life but here's the thing. With the Vio, you can actually buy an extended sheet battery for about $150. And when you use that, you're actually doubling the Vio battery life with the sheet battery and making it up to about 15 hours. Which is awesome, like if you're on a trip or if you just are on the go all the time and you don't know if you're going to be able to get to an outlet, 15 mm -hmm. hours is awesome. It's a lot of hours. And now here's the thing, when you buy the sheet battery and the Vio S, it's still cheaper than buying the baseline MacBook Pro. Now, we should be upfront that it does add a little more weight to your machine. With the sheet battery attached, you're looking at something that's a little more than five pounds. All right, other differences with the Mac. You know, some might prefer the OS and interface. Obviously, Mac OS is only on Macs. Windows is only on PCs. Uh, others may prefer the design touches, like the magnetic AC adapter. And there's been some buzz over the MacBook Pro's new high-speed Thunderbolt connection for it, right? Which is a great right technology, but you're going to find that there aren't a lot of Thunderbolt peripherals out there just yet. Uh, the VIOS includes USB 3.0, which the Mac doesn't, and that's over double the transfer rate of USB 2.0. Uh, finally, Mac computers tend to have a reputation for being the go-to computer for multimedia stuff, right? But what you might not be aware of is that both the MacBook Pro and the Vio S have the exact same integrated graphics card. 
So Sony took it a step further by building what's called hybrid graphics. So this means in addition to the integrated graphics card in the computer, the Vio S lets you switch to a separate dedicated graphics card with a processor specifically designed to handle high-end tasks like 3D gaming. Uh, we wanted to put Sony's graphics system to the test, so to do that, we actually gave the Vio S to a professional graphic designer who's also a die-hard Mac user to see how well it performed in doing her day-to-day -day tasks. Hey, I'm Stephanie Chu, and I am Revision 3's creative director, and I've been here at Revision 3 for about three and a half years now. Every day I work on our website, our show releases, and everything visual that you see on revision3.com. I usually use a beast of a MacBook Pro. It's 17 inches big, and it gets the job done. First thing I do in the mornings, come in, launch up Photoshop. Uh, I also use Illustrator on a daily basis. My initial impression when I received this Sony Vio S series computer was that it is slick looking. Um, a lot of times on my MacBook, I get a little lag, uh, especially when I'm running multiple programs at one time. And I found that the Vio was actually pretty snappy and there wasn't too much lag in scaling graphics or rendering graphics. So. That's pretty good. Uh, being a big gamer, I got to play around with the Vio S series myself, and it was a really good experience for me. The Vio S isn't really positioned as a gaming laptop, but most smaller laptops like this don't have a dedicated graphics card. And having a dedicated graphics card is super important in a gaming rig. Uh, the other thing you want to be aware of if you want to play games on your computer is that there are way more games available for the PC than the Mac platform. Just a truth. I'm just putting it out there. Real talk right Real there. Real talk, man. <laughs> So there you have it, a spec-to-spec -spec comparison of the two laptops plus a couple of informed opinions. Hopefully we helped you understand the differences so you can figure out which one is right for you. And if you want to know more about the Vio S, you can get more details on the Sony website. All right, moving on now to photography. So we talk a lot about Sony's line of cameras here on Signal, and occasionally we like to get some good photo tips from the pros. Someone like Adam Dean, a freelance photographer whose work has appeared in The New Yorker, Time Magazine, Newsweek, and Rolling Stone. I think you'll be surprised to hear that he doesn't normally shoot with a Sony camera, yet he was the winner of this year's PDN Sony Emerging Photographer Award. Uh, one of his prizes was the Sony A850, and I recently got a chance to go on a photo shoot with him here in the San Francisco Bay Area to see what what kind of magic he could make with his new Sony DSLR. So I'm here with Adam Dean, who just won the Sony Emerging Photographer Award. Thanks for being here with me. Thank you. So the A850 was a new camera to you. Were there any issues getting adjusted to, to the new camera or anything surprising about it? Uh, not really. This is very sort of user-friendly camera. I think anyone who's had any experience using DSLRs should um, pretty, pretty easily be able to use the 850. You know, the functionality and the user interface is very similar to other uh, DSLRs that I've used in the past. Cool. Yeah, so we, we just walked around the, uh, the neighborhood and took some quick photos, but uh, you're known for a very, very different kind of photography than what we did today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you normally shoot? Yeah, well, I'm uh, primarily a sort of photojournalist covering you know, stories for newspapers and magazines. The award that I've won, the Sony Emerging Photographer Award, is for work I did in Afghanistan. Well, obviously, uh, you've been in the middle of some, some really kind of uh, amazing events and some really powerful, powerful things. Uh, this was sort of more of a, just an everyday photo walk figuring out how to take cool pictures of everyday stuff. So we kind of kind of took you out of your element a little bit. When you're taking pictures in sort of overcast weather, is there anything that you need to know about setting up your camera or, or any tips you can give us? Well, in some ways it's actually easier when you've got overcast weather because you don't have the sort of bright, harsh sunlight that you mm -hmm. might get in the middle of the day on a, a clear day. You know, one thing to think about is when there's a lot of uh, you know, overcast, cloudy weather is to maybe boost the ISO a little bit higher. So okay. maybe shoot at 400 or 600 or 800 ISO, depending on how dark it is. What sort of like base settings do you use when you just take your camera out? Uh, I usually configure it to shoot the highest quality um, image file possible. So in this case, it's a raw file. Okay. Um, that way, you know, you have so much more control over the post-production, over recovering uh, any images that you might have not exposed correctly. So I would encourage people to, you know, who are serious about photography to start shooting raw. We're in a very kind of flat sort of industrial neighborhood with some very normal objects. You know, it's basically buildings and generators and cars and stuff like that. What, what are some tips that you have for taking everyday objects and sort of making them seem dynamic? With digital photography these days, it's so easy to um, take pictures. It's so cheap. You don't have to um, process the film. It's, you know, there's no expense really. So. Don't be afraid to experiment. Think outside the box. You know, try shooting through, you know, through different subjects. Try composing 
images from below, from the left, from the right, use different angles. Uh, experiment as much as you can, is, is what I'd say. Uh, one, one place that we went to was a train station where we had a, a very quick moving train coming at us. Uh, do you have any tips for getting a fast moving subject? Obviously, if, if the subject, like in this case, the train mm -hmm. is moving fast, you want to freeze the action. You need to shoot at a higher shutter speed. So, you know, anything from 500 uh, or maybe even faster if it's really moving quickly. In your kit, when you're out running around, what kind of lenses do you normally use? Uh, yeah, it really depends on the uh, assignment, but typically I use um, one or two camera bodies and then fixed prime lenses. So I use a, a wide angle 24 lens and a 50 millimeter lens on the second camera. I think for certain applications, you know, I would certainly be happy just using a zoom lens uh, like this from 24 to 70. Um, you know, and I think for I guess non-professional photographers who perhaps don't want to spend a fortune, um, you know, a zoom lens would be a great starter lens to uh, get with their camera. I think I definitely learned a couple things that are going to come in handy in the future. Great, thank, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, man. Cheers. Well, we want to let you know that if you're a photographer yourself, no matter what level you're at, you can always join the Sony Camera Club on Flickr. All types of Sony cameras are welcome, and if you learned any good tricks from our shoot with Adam Dean, be sure to post your photos to the group pool. We might even show them off in a future episode of Signal. Yeah, and I'm on the Sony Camera Club as well, so I would love to see what you guys are doing. Anyway, that's all we have time for today. As always, we encourage you to check out sony.com slash signal for links to all the products we featured on the show, or you can go to youtube.com slash signal to post your comments and questions. Don't hold back. Tell us everything. Get it all off your chest. Mm -hmm. For now, this is Anthony and Samia saying see you next time. I want to know it all. I want to know everything. I just do. Send me your breakfast schedule. It's usually in the morning for me.